Hi, my name is Liz and I'm going to show you some basic info and background on responsible lit searching and then take you how to search in Ovid Medline. You probably have done more searching in PubMed if you're an average medical student or just an average database user at UT Southwestern. Most people prefer PubMed because it's just what they're comfortable with and it is the one that's freely available but we're going to look at some of the advantages of using Ovid Medline. If you need a review on how to use PubMed I'm going to link a playlist um, in the description of this video and send it out in an email to you as well and you can review the functions of PubMed that we're going to look at in an Ovid Medline and during class on Tuesday, we'll look at Embase and Scopus, which are a couple of other medical databases. So these are your learning objectives for the class. And we're looking at how to search in Ovid Medline here as well. Uh, PubMed and Ovid Medline are just two different interfaces for the database Medline. You can think of them like Google and Bing in that way that they're just different interfaces for searching the same um, information. Being in Google, both search the internet, but they have different bells and whistles. Same thing for PubMed and Ovid Medline. And here are your student researcher responsibilities. You can pause and read through these if you want. And here are reasons to practice responsible literature searching. A big reason that medical schools and healthcare institutions teach this is because if you're not systematic and careful with your literature searching, it can have deadly consequences. Um, there was a healthy research volunteer named Ellen Roche who died in 2001 um, at Johns Hopkins University because the researchers didn't do a complete enough search. They just did like a cursory search in PubMed. So that's not good and that can be avoided if you do due diligence in searching. This is an extreme example of course, the death of a research subject, but doing your due diligence with searching can also just help you get better information for patients and for research and whatever you're working on. And you're not expected to sit down and search three or four databases just every time you have a quick question for yourself um, or for a patient or when you're a resident, if your attending asks you something. People don't always have time to sit down and do a very robust search. So there's various levels. There's a quick search when it's just something you need to look up quickly. Um, sometimes a bit of a longer search if it's a tricky question or a tricky case. And it can be a very intense and long process if you're doing something like a systematic review. If you're doing something like a literature review, it would be in between these two levels. So there's different levels of research. We're giving you some of the tools here that you can use when you do need to dig deeper. So these are the search steps. You've probably seen these before. And what we're going to do is take your topic and break it down and search one database in this demo and the application exercise. And we're going to use Pico for this. Uh, this is one mnemonic you've probably seen before. It's in, there's more about it in those review videos from Foundations of Clinical Reasoning if you want to look through those. But basically, it's a mnemonic to break down your question into different relevant parts. And then you can use keywords for these to search. And methodology is just which types of methods answer your questions the best. And there's more about that in the um, hierarchy of research and clinical questions video on that YouTube playlist if you need a little refresher with that. 
There's a bunch of different databases. These are just a few that we subscribe to at UT Southwestern, but these are what I call our heavy hitters, ones that people use a lot. Like I was saying earlier, PubMed and Ovid Medline, they're just on this one line here because they're basically the same database with different interfaces. Um, Embase and Scopus we'll look at on Tuesday in class. And then here are some other ones for specific areas. Um, psych Info is good to look at if you're looking into something about psychiatry or psychology or a multidisciplinary subject that does have aspects of that. So um, that's, that's just good to know. Scopus has the MD after it because it's multidisciplinary, but we'll look more into that later. And there's a couple of search techniques we'll be looking at. Building block is the main one for what we're going to be looking at. Um, but pearl growing is one that you can use as well. With building blocks, we start with concepts, related keywords, subject headings, and search each concept or keyword separately. Um, some databases have mapping, PubMed does, um, Ovid Medline sort of has a different kind of mapping. We'll look at that. Don't worry about that just yet. And then you combine them with Boolean operators. This is a super simple analogy for um, building block technique. Just if you think of your different Pico terms as these different Lego colors here, you can um, snap them off and put them together in different combinations with Lego blocks. And with Pico um, searching your terms one by one, you can do that as well. And you can combine them in many different ways and get different search results. But we'll look more at that when we get into the database in just a few minutes here. And then you put your um, Pico terms together or your different search terms with Boolean operators. We'll look at those more in the database as well. Um, but for or, you can use that to expand your search out. An easy way to remember that is or means more. And means that you're narrowing down your search. So you're putting a couple of terms together. You can also use not. Most of the time librarians say use that carefully and sparingly um, because you can accidentally leave out some search results that are relevant to your search. But every once in a while you can use that as well if you're just getting a lot of search results that aren't what you're looking for. And then pearl growing is another way that you can look for articles related to your search. Um, if you start out and find a really useful article by Dr. A and you think, okay, this is just what I'm looking for, then you can look and see what other articles are citing your article by Dr. A, and maybe there's one by Dr. B, and then you can look in Dr. B's bibliography. Oh, there's a good article by Dr. C. Click on similar article links, and you might find yet another article. So this is basically just a way of starting out with one really good article and then trying to find similar articles, either by going up and down the citation chain, looking at bibliographies, and then databases often have um, little uh, links that tell you what articles cited a particular article. And then they also have a button oftentimes or a link that says similar articles. And that'll just be the algorithm trying to find you articles that are similar to each other. So for what we're going to look at for the example, this is a, it seems fairly straightforward, but even with this pretty simple example, um, there might be more that you can find in the databases to help you narrow and expand your search. So this is a breast cancer survivor um, wanting to resume her exercise routine after um, her treatment and she wants to know how that can affect her quality of life. And as you can see here, I just have a P, an I, and an O. No C for control because control is just kind of implied, not exercising. So we'll go into Ovid Medline and take more of a look at that. 
Okay, now I'm going to go into Ovid Medline, and that is going to be on our library homepage. If you just scroll down to this gray box that has popular links in it, you can click on Ovid Medline, and then you might need to put in your usual UT Southwestern username and password. And this is what it's going to look like. So the first thing I want you to do here when you get into Ovid Medline is go to My Account, and then you're going to need to create a new account. And so you go down here to Create Account, and then just put in all this information. Um, one thing to remember about this is that you have to have a password with no special characters. That's really the only tricky part of it because most passwords have special characters that I have these days. But then once you're done, just go back or it'll put you back out into your Ovid page, but now you'll be signed in with an account. After you have your account set up, the first thing you need to do, and you can follow along and pause for a second after you um, do this because it'll be good if you can follow along because you'll need to use what you do to send in an assignment at the end of this little exercise. So go to change this little link right here and then click on the third check mark box down. And this is going to be because there are subject headings assigned, mesh headings. If you don't remember what those are, you can go and look back at the video from FCR. It's pretty short, explains what mesh headings are, and we'll look at those a little bit more. These are newer ones that don't have these medical subject headings assigned yet. And then these are both of, um, or this has both of these databases combined together. So that's only with Ovid Medline, so you just need to remember to do that. Okay, and we'll start off searching with subject headings. It automatically maps to subject heading. So our question was, how does exercise affect breast cancer survivors quality of life? So I'm going to put in breast cancer survivors because that's our population or our particular patient in that example. And I'm not seeing breast cancer survivors come up as a subject heading. It's offering to let me search or the database is suggesting that I can search it as a keyword. Instead, not every single um, topic that you put into a database is going to have a subject heading yet. But we do have cancer survivors and we do have breast neoplasms. So we can look at those two in a little more depth. A good idea with Ovid Medline is to click on the link for your subject heading. Then you can see where it falls in what's called a mesh tree here. It's called a tree, but it's basically a big outline. It, you know, branches out into um, different branches. So that's why it's called a tree. Um, you can click on context here and then you can see where breast neoplasms might show up um, in different parts of the tree. Here it's neoplasms by sight. Here it's breast diseases. So breast neoplasm fall, falls under both of those. Go back to the full tree. And then the other thing, when you type in your first PICO term, you might not get something like this, or you might get, um, or you might have a term that has even more terms underneath it. If it's the last term um, at the end of a branch, so to speak, it doesn't have anything underneath it, like breast neoplasms comma male doesn't have any more specific types of cancer underneath it. But this is just important if you do have something like this, then if you want to include all the terms underneath it, so if I wanted to include all these different kinds of breast cancers, 
I would hit explode. And then I can go over here and click on the scope note. And this is a good idea to do as well. This will show you just the basic definition that this database has for um, breast neoplasm, no, sorry, breast neoplasms, tumors, or cancer of the human breast. Looks like we're looking, looks like what we're looking for. Sometimes the mesh term page also gives you another suggested term. Sometimes it gives you several suggested terms you can search for um, under C related. And a nice thing about these mesh terms is that, and you might remember this from looking in PubMed because it has this same, um, it has these same subject headings just in a, displayed in a different format. But if you search for breast neoplasms as a mesh heading, then it doesn't matter which of the synonyms authors might have used for breast cancer or breast neoplasms. It's going to catch all of those. But put a pin in that and we will come back to that in a little while and I'll show you something else with that. But uh, one important thing that is sort of annoying about Ovid databases is that you want to try to hit the previous page, internal navigation, instead of hitting the back button because about maybe 40, 50% of time, the time, the back button will eat your work. It usually doesn't happen to me, but it's happened to other people. And I just wouldn't want you to lose search results. So if we've got explode here, we can hit continue. And then you're going to see a bunch of things called subheadings. And these are just more particular topics about breast neoplasms themselves. So breast neoplasms, how does diet therapy affect it? How does drug therapy affect it? And these can be tempting, I'd say, to, to check off, especially if you're looking for something specific. But it's a better idea to just hit continue. You can either include all subheadings or um, click continue, and it'll include um, all of them by default. So we can just go ahead and do that. And then if we look at our search results, we can see that we have a bunch of different, we have a whole lot of different articles that this found because of course, um, breast cancer, breast neoplasms is a huge topic. And then you can customize your display here to show citation, abstract, subject headings. You can always go back and make it just the citation if you want to. And then we can see here that we have subject headings. Yeah, like this one has breast neoplasms slash SU for surgery. So if you were going uh, through all of your different results here and you kept seeing mesh term, um, this one has surgery again. Yeah, so you could always go back and click on um, search breast neoplasms again and put in surgery just to see how many results you get with that. I'll show you how to do that real quick. Oops, sorry, keep it mapped to subject heading, breast neoplasm, breast neoplasms, continue, and then we're actually not looking at surgery for our, our topic. We're looking for, it's more of therapy, like exercise therapy, I would think. So yeah, you'll get a, a lot fewer results, but it's always better to start broad like that. And then you can also click here um, and take off your subject heading. So now we're just going to search for keywords. And to do that, you can go to search fields and we can put in breast neoplasms. Click off of all fields because that's a lot. Um, but we'll just do abstract and title and then keyword heading and let's see. OK, 
Okay. Uh, Yeah, we'll just do that and then search. Okay, and so that's going to give you a different amount of results. One thing you can do that can be useful to expand out your search is if you have something like breast neoplasms, let me go back to just regular advanced search, breast neoplasms, Hit search, go to your scope note. And then what about all these terms? You could search for those in the title, abstract and keyword as well. I'm gonna show you a little shortcut to do that. So you just open up Microsoft Word. Sorry, that's taking a second. And I have this little paragraph icon turned on. So I can paste them as keep text only. And then I'm gonna go to find and replace. It's just in a slightly different place on a um, same idea on a PC. And then put in caret P and then put space. OR, capital OR space, replace all. And then that's just a shortcut so you don't have to type in OR a whole bunch of times. If you do, sometimes it's fine to just do it. It's easier to do it with just typing if you don't have a whole lot of synonyms or um, for your specific term that you're searching for. But if we go back and just, you can always also click on search for your home base here. And then if we do this, we can put in an open parenthesis, close parenthesis, and then dot AB comma TI comma KF period. And that's just telling the database what to search for. And then it's going to think a second to do that. Okay, so that's a whole bunch more results than we got just searching for um, breast neoplasms by itself. So we can do your mesh term, your keyword terms, or sorry, yeah, your keywords is really what these are called because those are finding terms in the title abstract and key, keywords that aren't necessarily the mesh term. And then we can find all of the synonym keywords and then or them together. Okay, so this is just if you're doing a really comprehensive search, it's just good to know how to do this. Um, sometimes if you're, we've all had the experience I think, of looking for a topic and just not finding results and you're just trying to find the right keywords to put into Google or PubMed or wherever you're searching. So this is a way to expand it out. So you can pause here if you need to go do that or rewind and do that. But I'm gonna go ahead and go on to my next term. So we also had cancer survivors as a mesh term. And with this one, if you look at the scope note, you're gonna see the year of entry for this one. That's also something you can look at it a scope in a scope note, is 2018. And you that had previous indexing of survivors in 2014 through 2017. And all this means it, when you see the date is when it start when it became an index term in a mesh. And these mesh terms are assigned to the different articles by professional indexers. It's their whole job to read articles that are in Medline, the database behind Ovid Medline and PubMed, 
and they assign terms to the articles that are the major ideas of the article. I think of them like academic hashtags, um, but it takes a while for this indexing system to catch up with just regular language because I know I heard the term cancer survivor, uh, cancer survivors long before 2018, but that's when it was in here. So sometimes you might want to look at previous indexing terms, especially if it's a pretty new topic you're looking at, or even sometimes like with cancer survivors, a not so new topic. So you can also click on it to see if that is like, okay, so that's the last one in our little tree here, but we also have survivors. And then there's different types of survivors under here. Yeah, and then if I click on, if you click on these little plus signs next to a few of these, it will give you some even more specific terms underneath. I'm just going to go ahead and explode survivors out. And you might be thinking, oh, well, we're going to get all this stuff about HIV survivors and or long-term survivors, atomic bomb survivors. That's not what we're looking for. And you're right, but our other search terms about neoplasms, she'll probably knock out all these search terms about, or all the articles we might find that talk about these other kinds of survivors. So I'm going to go ahead and continue there. And then you could search these as different lines to be more precise too. And then we can go back and do the other search terms um, that we had, um, or we could do the same thing we did with the terms before, um, doing that, all those synonyms with the ors. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you um, Yes, yeah, so we can do survivors. Yeah, unclick your map to subject heading. Survivors or cancer survivors. And then um, put the same thing we had up here. We all can just copy and paste it. I know it's pretty small. So looking in the I title, abstract, and keywords, click search. So that'll be a bunch more. And then I could always go in and do the ors like I did before. I can, I'll just do that with cancer survivors one more time to show you. Oops, I'm sorry. You have to map it to the subject heading to get back to the tree and the list and everything. Okay, so cancer survivors, click on it. I'm sorry, I could have gone to I could have gone to it just from here, cancer survivor scope note. And then I'm going to copy all of these, go back over to Word. I'll try this real quick. If we do insert, this is just fancy word stuff to try to help you keep your, um, if you want to use this method, um, this is just something that might help keep your stuff together, but Ovid will save things for you. So you can do section break, next page, and then I'm going to paste these, keep text only, and then I'm going to um, go to, let's see, see if it'll do it this way. Place all, okay, so it did the same thing. And then you can just clean up the ors off the end. I can copy those once again and go to previous page. I'm just going to go back to search actually. And then put all these in, in parentheses, and then copy abstract title keyword and once in a while Ovid won't like your punctuation um, we've been pretty lucky so far but um, yeah just like if you have a stray period or something if it says no results sometimes it just doesn't like the the results that we're getting so okay so I've got cancer survivors 
um, or survivors with the mesh terms. Then I've got them with the um, other terms. And sorry, this was an accident that I did. Um, this was the ones, um, yeah, I just did without, I did that without going in and uh, specifying keywords and whatnot and abstracts and titles. So you can also remove stuff. So I can, or all of these. And then last one is, our last main term is exercise. We also have quality of life. We'll look at that too real quick. Oops, okay. So if I, you just do exercise with the map to subject heading off, that will also get you, it's just gonna search through everything, like major con, like top book title, app subject heading, floating set, rare disease supplementary concept word. So it's just more precise to do these three, or there might be a fourth one. I'll tell you on class on Tuesday if there's an extra one we can put in. Um, I just wasn't seeing it when I clicked over here. Keyword. Okay, that's fine. Um, but the basic idea here um, is that we've got our all of our different breast neoplasm terms, all of our different cancer survivor terms. And then we could put those together actually, because this is all about our patient population. So I'm gonna do one or three or four or six or se and six or seven or eight because these are all our terms um, about breast cancer and these are all our terms about cancer survivors. I could have gone in and done um, the little copy and paste trick to get all the synonyms for survivors, but I'm just not gonna worry about this to make this not too, too long. Okay, so we've got those. Okay, so let's go ahead and do exercise, map to subject heading, and then we have exercise here. Oops, sorry, that was, yeah, sometimes the screen's a little small here. That's the main thing. Let me go ahead and click on exercise this way. And we've got a bunch of different um, types of exercise underneath here. So I'm just gonna explode it out and continue and continue. And then I've shown you how to do this a couple of times. So I'm gonna skip those steps for this um, and just um, go into quality of life. I'm sorry, I've shown you how to go and add in keyword terms several times here. Um, so you could just keep doing that for your intervention term or whatever. And here we have an outcome term for quality of life. It's the, it's almost less. There's psychological well-being underneath here. So I'll say, okay, I can go ahead and include that. These little numbers, by the way, are the numbers of articles that have each of these. This is one advantage that Ovid Medline has over PubMed, in my opinion, because you can just see how many articles there are for each of these topics, which is kind of useful. And then you can continue, just leave that out. For now are no subheadings. And then I'm going to put my five and nine. So that was breast cancer, all my breast cancer terms on five, all my survivor terms on nine, put them together. And then I'm gonna put them together with exercise and quality of life and those. So we got 399 results here. Not too bad. There's a few other things we can do with this. If we click on it and then go down here to limits, we can click on additional limits to see more if we want. And then I'm gonna narrow it down to English language, narrow it down to fee, not female, um, just in case, uh, in this case, most of our breast cancer survivors are female, but if you narrow something down to female or male, um, you might, that might, you might leave out 
some important information that's affecting patients of the opposite sex. Um, so just that's just something to keep in mind in general. Usually with clinical topics, you're good looking at just humans. Uh, if you want to see animal studies for whatever reason, you can click on animals as well. If you want to limit your years or your age groups, publication types, again, you might want to go back and look at that hierarchy of evidence, um, video on, on the playlist uh, for front, sorry, not frontiers, foundations of clinical reasoning. But if we just wanted to narrow these down to meta-analysis and systematic reviews, we could... Um, stuff like that. But then when you're done picking your limits, you can just limit your search. And that only took out a few, but sometimes it'll take out more than that. Um, I think our, our search terms here are just kind of tilted towards humans instead of animal studies. But then you can click on display results and you can see more here. If th these are getting too long, you can always go back to customize display and just search by citation or just citation and abstract. You can figure out what you want to do there and look through these and see if any of them seem to be useful to you. And you can always go in or if you have your display up where you can just see the mesh terms. Um, or the mesh subject headings, you can do that. See if there's um, other terms that you might want to use. You can also click on just on the list or if you go into a particular article, you can click on find similar or find citing articles. And these are like what we were looking at with that little pearl growing slide I showed you earlier. So you can definitely explore pearl growing if you want to do that to try to find some similar articles. You can also always get the full text and go into the bibliography of the article because that's the other uh, part of pearl growing, finding the articles that cited it, looking for similar articles that the database is helping you find, and then also um, just going into the article and finding who they cited originally or which articles rather. But now what we're going to do is go up to my account and see, make sure that you're logged in with an account. If you're not, go ahead and sign in. Then go back to search and I'm signed in now because it says my name up here. And then what I can do is click on save all and then I'm going to name and save my search. And it's a good idea to put in Medline to remember which database you're searching in because there's different databases we have that have this format. And then I'm going to put in the date. So 3-1-24. And I don't think it likes periods. Sometimes we can see if it does here. Yeah, that's the only annoying thing about this. Just to see which date you ran the search because sometimes if you have to go back and run a search again, there'll be um, new articles in the database. And then I can just, I'll put scholarly activity demo so I can remember what that is. And then I can save it. Yeah, it doesn't. That's just one little annoying thing about it. Let's see, save. Cool, and now that'll be in my saved searches. And the only other thing you need to do here, or you can go back to your saved searches. Um, to do that, you go back to view saved, and this will just kind of keep your work for you. I have a bunch in here that I need to delete, but I can go in here and click on it, and then I can run it again. But what I want y'all to do is share your search history and email all search history. And then you can just put my email address in there.
is my name, elizabeth.barksdale at utsouthwestern.edu. Put your email address in, put in your full name, and put in um, scholarly, you just put like scholarly activity, you can abbreviate that, um, and put in your name. Um, so I'd put in, or just put in like your first initial last name. So whatever that is for your name. And then, um, yeah, just send it. You can put a note if you got a question or anything, but that's all you need to do. Just abbreviate scholarly activity, put your first initial last name, send it to me. And then I and the other librarians will have your search history so we can help you with that. You'll also be able to log in to Ovid and, ba or Ovid and show us what you did. So that'll help out on Tuesday. Um, and this is something you got to do for part of your assignment. So then I just click send email and I'll just go ahead and put this in again so I can show you what it'll look like. Send it to myself. That's Barksdale and then send email and that's all you got to do. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'll check email over the weekend. Um, but thanks for listening and I'll see you on Tuesday.